uh, Tom Brooks joins us now, uh, law professor and dean at Durham Law School. Uh, Tom, good to have you with us again. So, uh, I suppose not surprising that the Queen has approved Boris Johnson's request. He says this is an entirely normal process. A uh, lot of criticism, though, that this is undermining democracy. The Speaker of the House calling it a constitutional outrage. What do you think? I'm with those who say it's a constitutional uh, outrage, and I say that because there's been some what's called proging or suspending uh, Parliament before uh, by government. This is not the first time it's happened, that's very true, but it's typically only uh, a couple of days, not several weeks. Uh, so instead of three days, four days, um, uh, what Boris Johnson is hoping to do is uh, do almost a month, uh, over three weeks, he's hoping to suspend Parliament at a critical time uh, uh, to potentially examine his Brexit plans and try to force through his own uh, version of, of a potential no deal um, outcome on the country, which is the one thing that uh, we know that parliamentarians are for. MPs have been against various versions of the deal, but they've all been against uh, no deal. And he's, instead of his successor, Theresa May, who did at least try to win a vote in Parliament, he's trying to stop them voting at all. Um, so I think it is outrageous. And, and dragging the Queen, who is a non-political figure and a unifying figure in Britain, I think is, is a particular low. So a number of uh, high-profile politicians, including a, a former Prime Minister, have threatened to go to court to challenge this legally. Do you think there is a legal recourse here? I think there is. I mean, there's people who say, oh, there's no chance of succeeding. The Prime Minister has lots of uh, uh, options, lots of leeway to effectively get his way. Uh, they're fairly right, but this is the same group of people who thought that Gina Miller's case uh, had no chance of winning, and it did. That was the case that forced uh, Prime Minister Theresa May to go to Parliament to get approval to start Brexit, that she couldn't do it on her own. And the lawyers, the barristers behind that, are behind this. Uh, in Scotland right now. So it's the same kind of legal team, in fact, including a Durham Law graduate, uh, Q, now QC, uh, who are doing this case in Scotland. I think it does have a, a chance of success. We'll find out uh, soon. No one can say for sure because this is uncharted water. Uh, but if it were to succeed, it would really uh, tear to shreds uh, the Prime Minister's plans at the moment um, and bring it back but to the drawing board at the worst possible time. But look, I mean, does any of this matter? Because the EU has repeatedly said that the only deal in town is Theresa May's withdrawal agreement, and nobody wants that either. You're absolutely right um, about this. I suspect that, that Boris, I mean, Boris Johnson made clear during the referendum campaign that he was not in favor of no deal himself. He thought that there would be a deal. He thought that uh, the uh, hit to the European economy if Britain were to walk away without any arrangement would be so big that German automakers would not let the German Chancellor allow it to happen and other countries uh, similarly and that no deal was never a real option and I think that this uh, trying to look like he's forcing through a no deal through any means possible I think it's just really a, a sense of, of bluster I think it's just um, a, a show of, of, of to threaten the EU and to show how serious he is about potentially delivering it. I think when, um, when it actually comes to the 11th hour, if the EU doesn't blink, um, then I think then he will, like his predecessor, uh, ask for uh, another extension while blaming the EU of, uh, for uh, problems. But I think, you know, not, a New Deal outcome would hurt the UK, uh, not necessarily irreparably, uh, but according to own Brexiteers like Jacob Rees-Mogg, uh, currently the leader of the House and, and Boris Johnson's government, he said it might be 50 years until we uh, kind of start getting some benefit from a no-deal Brexit. I mean, if that's the assessment of the government uh, ministers and cabinet, then that is, is quite a damaging thing for Britain and why I think he'll push come to show, try to avoid it. Tom, thanks very much indeed for that. Tom Brooks there from Durham University.